We've seen this structure before. We're going to add in one new anatomical piece here um, to talk about intrinsic regulation of GFR. Um, so as you know, we've got the renal corpuscle is this whole shebang. And that's made up of the glomerulus um, and the glomerular capsule. We've had some other structures we've labeled here, like the podocytes with their cell bodies and foot processes. Um, here's the capsular space. I'm not going to label everything here right now because the point here um, is to label this new structure right here. And by new, I mean, I haven't talked about it yet. This is the, I'm gonna put it down here first. Yeah, I'll label it right here. This whole thing, cause I've got a nice label there, is the juxtaglomerular complex. And it is a group of various cell types um, that includes those ones right there, macula densa cells, that's not how you spell cells, and notice where we are, right? We are right next to this glomerulus. There are these extra glomerular mesangial cells we don't need to talk about, and then granular cells we're also going to talk about. They're along what? The afferent arterial. So two cell types are the focus here. Macula densa, these cells are in contact with um, right, the glomerulus, but also with what else? This thing right here is the ascending limb of the nephron loop. I'm gonna label that, I'll keep it this color. Right here. I'm gonna write it here. Why is this important? Well, it's a place where we want to monitor what's in the filtrate. So these macula densa cells can monitor um, specifically NACL in that ascending limb in the nephron loop, we'll say, coming out of the nephron loop. I'll put, actually put that after, right? Because it's the ascending limb, we've come away from that loop. There's chemoreceptors located in these macula densa cells, right? That makes sense? Okay, the other cells we need to know about are the granular cells. Let's do some nice blue for those. These again are located along the afferent arterial. What do you think they might have? Um, they're gonna have mechanoreceptors for what? For detecting stretch, detect blood pressure. Um, blood pressure of this afferent arterial, these granular cells are going to produce renin, which you've heard of. So that's where those are located. Let's start with intrinsic regulation of GFR. Okay, so the first mechanism I'm going to do in blue, why not? Um, first of all, our stimulus is going to be low systemic blood pressure. And our kidneys want to maintain glomerular filtration rate, perfusion, which in the kidneys case is going to result in filtration in order to maintain kidney function. That's their goal. This is intrinsic right now. 
So one way that this can happen is, so decreased blood pressure is going to result in decreased blood pressure in the afferent arterioles, right? This is going to re reduce filtration rate, right? We're actually decreasing um, hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries, reducing net filtration pressure and reducing GFR. This is gonna result in reduced stretch of those afferent arterioles. I'll do, add that in. Reduced stretch, this is myogenic. This is gonna result in vasodilation of those same arterioles. If the dilation is going to do what to GFR? Increase GFR by um, having vasodilation. This is called myogenic. This is the same thing we saw with the arterioles of our skeletal muscles um, in response to so local perfusion changes. But we've got another mechanism. So this reduced GFR um, which I could do from here even but I'm going to do it separately. So reduced GFR because we have decreased NFP but the mechanism is not going to be well it is ultimately from blood pressure in the glomerular capillaries. This is gonna result in reduced um, filtrate flow, right? And dec decreased NACL in that as ascending limb. We have less reabsorption. I'm sorry, we don't have less reabsorption. We have less filtrate, so we have less sodium in that ascending limb. What is going to detect this reduced sodium in the ascending limb? Well, our macula densa cells of that juxtaglomerular complex. The, these cells normally produce compounds that constrict. So we're going to have a lack of vasoconstrictors. So let me take a moment to tell you, and I should have had this in the previous video, a previous slide, I guess, those macula densa cells with high blood pressure and then NACL, high GFR, they are going to um, produce various things that vasoconstrict. So ATP, for example. So this um, lack of vasoconstrictors is going to cause vasodilation. Just like we did over there and thereby increase GFR. This is the tubuloglomerular mechanism. All right, this learning check might be a bit harder. Um, please try to do it, and I will also draw it out for you. High GFR is our stimulus. This is going to result in increased NACL in that ascending loop. This is going to trigger the macula densa cells 
which are going to release ATP. So that's actually an output signal. This is going to cause the afferent arterioles to do what? Constrict. This is where those macular densa cells are detecting NACL. This is going to do what? Decrease GFR, negative feedback. Nice, huh? Okay, so this is also review here, another diagram. Um, decreased blood flow to the kidneys, for example. So again, going back to that reduction is going to decrease NFP, decrease GFR, cause dilation of the afferent arterioles in order to respond to that. If this is sufficient, we're great. We've got homeostasis restored, blood flow to the kidney is restored. This is an immediate local response of the kidney to altered blood flow to the kidney and intrinsic autoregulation um, oftentimes the kidney can regulate GFR itself. However, if this is insufficient, right, if this to restore GFR, um, the kidneys themselves can trigger a central response. So that's what is kind of just diagrammed here with this simple arrow. If this dilation doesn't restore GFR, which you can imagine cases where it might not, um, we can dilate the arterioles all we want if there's um, a lack of blood volume or other things going on in the body, we're gonna need to call in the central nervous system. So that's when extrinsic regulation occurs to um, address mean arterial blood pressure. This is then going to hopefully restore GFR as well. 